So to make a scoreboard, um, hopefully this process is um, fairly familiar to you because uh, you've you've already done it like several times um, in the games that we've uh, created before. Let me get rid of this because I messed up earlier. So um, you also need a scoreboard so the player can keep track of the score. There's already a show score function written, but it only shows the text score and not the actual score. Uh, you can see an example of a working scoreboard in Lesson 16, Level 9. This is, of course, assuming that you completed Lesson 16, Level 9 and got it to work and function correctly. Um, read the code in the show score function. Call the function inside the draw loop right after you draw the background. Use the text blocks to display the score at the top of your screen. Um, so as you can see right now when we run this, there is no score shown at the top. The function is there, but we have to actually call it in order for it to, um, to happen. Um, so down here, you can see in show score, what it's doing is changing the background of what it's going to be, uh, or the fill color to white, um, sets the font size to 20, and then um, shows the actual word score with a colon. Uh, and this is something that a lot of students really struggle with, is the difference between a string and a variable. A string is when we put something inside of quotes, it will show us the word that is displayed inside of those quotes. So in this case, we have inside of quotes, we have the word score and a colon. So that will show on the screen score. But then when we want to show the value that is stored inside of the variable, that's when we put score without any quotes in the lowercase s, and that will show us the value that is currently stored in the variable score. So um, in order to do that, first of all, we have to call the score function in order to show the score or the show score function. So we take a my function here and we put it underneath as it indicated. Um, uh, call the function inside the draw loop. So we're inside the draw loop right after you draw the background. So drew the background, draw the background, and then we're going to um, show score. And so once we do that, you can see we have, we have score um, with the capital S and we have the, the colon, but we don't see the variable or what's um, stored inside the variable score. And so we need to add that to this function here. Um, the easiest way I can tell you to do that is, we just go here to show text. We just copy this line right here. Um, there, copy, and then we can paste. And we're gonna get rid of the quotes. We'll get rid of the colon, make it a lowercase s. So we're just doing the um, variable score. And then what this will do is it'll put a zero right here where that S is. And of course, that doesn't really help us because we can't really see it. So in order to adjust the X value of that variable so we can move it along the X um, axis over, we're going to take that first number and instead of 10, we're going to change it to 80. And then what that should do is just shift it right on over so that it is lined up perfectly with, um, with everything else and so that we can read it. So then we've shown the score. We have our scorekeeper. Uh, we can uh, view it. So we're going to finish this level and move on to number eight. Uh, so we've set up kind of all the background stuff. Now we've got to start setting up all the sprites. So in this case, um, for this one, we're going to set up a platform. Now that you have your background and your variables, it's time to create your sprites. Usually, it will be easiest to start with the sprites that are part of the environment, such as your platforms. This, the simple sample game, had two platform sprites, but you'll make one first and then test it before copying and pasting the code uh, to the second. So we're going to look at your worksheet and choose the um, platform sprite to create. Uh, in the Create Sprites at the area at the top of the code, Create your new sprite with the create sprite block, giving it the correct position and label name. Um, use the set animation and velocity blocks to give your sprite correct image and downward velocity. Test the sprite to make sure it's moving in the correct way. You might need to adjust its velocity. 
the sprite will go off the screen and not come back. You make it loop back around in the next level. So we don't have to worry about looping right now. So your game will not look like this in the fact that it's continuing to come back. Yours is just going to go down once. So you notice now in the Cake Defender, they were giving you a lot of specifics. They were saying set this X value, set this Y value, do all of these things. Whereas here, they want you to try to figure out some of that stuff on your own. Um, now, if you have their cheat sheet guide um, that I made available to you on Canvas, then you can see um, in this, they've kind of given you those values. Um, so uh, if we look at platform here, platform one, X and Y is 150 and the velocity is 0.5. Uh, goes down but jumps back to the top when it hits the bottom. Um, so we can just go off the information they have here. Um, I think they wanted you to try to figure this out on your own, but you're watching these videos. You want some help. You don't really know what's going on. So we're giving you instruction. So first thing we need to do is here at the top of the code, um, we need under the variables, we need to create our sprite. So uh, right here where it says create sprites, that's what we're going to do. So under sprites, we're going to say var sprite equals create sprite. And we're going to name this sprite, of course, uh, platform one. Platform one. And then we create the sprite, and our little cheat sheet says we need uh, 150. So instead of 200, 200 we're going to do 100. And this one's going to be 50. Uh, then we need to sign an animation to that sprite. So sprite does the animation. We're going to do that here. Uh, and then we're going to say uh, plat form one dot set animation. And um, if we're lazy and we don't feel like going to the animation tab, we can show blocks. Just click on this little arrow. And we're going to make it platform. Uh, and then we're going to set its velocity. So remember, we can set the velocity here at the beginning because it's not going to change. It's going at a constant velocity the whole time. It's not going to adjust during the course of the program. So all we've got to do here is say uh, velocity y for our platform 1, uh, platform 1. And we're going to make that 0.5 is the rate at which we want that velocity to be running. So then when we hit run, we've got our platform, and it's going really slow. So I might have read that wrong. It says 0.5. Maybe we should make it a 1, just because um, I think it's going like way too slow. So we'll take this and we'll make it 1 instead of 0.5. Because, yeah. That's still going really slow. Maybe it is. Maybe it's 5. So you can kind of play around with it. If you want it to be slow, then you can make it slow. That definitely looks like more of the speed that they were going at. So there you go. You have it. We set up a platform. We have that platform coming down to the bottom of the screen. Once it gets to the bottom, it disappears and uh, won't come back. We will loop it in the uh, next video. So hopefully you're able to keep up and understand where we are so far.